Good morning and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to Haya Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life, and Jesus is truly King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And together, God's people say, Hallelujah. Well, friends, today is July the 11th in the year of our Lord, 2017, and this is One a Day for the Soul. Now, I'd like to talk to you this morning about a subject that has been troubling my spirit for quite some time, and we actually see it on the rise. It began many, 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 many years ago. As far back as I can remember, it used the word strike. Then we started to hear the word, or I did at least, maybe my generation started to hear the word boycott. Now, the customary word seems to be activism. But there is one central theme that runs through the core of all of these ideas. And that's going to be our text this morning. 1 Samuel chapter 15 and verse 23 says, For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Now, as offensive as this may be to some, maybe even most, the idea of striking or boycotting, or being involved in an activist group appears to me to be an act of rebellion. Wikipedia defines it as activism consists of efforts to promote, impede, or direct social, political, economic, and or environmental reform or stasis with the desire to make improvements in society. Now that sounds positive on the forefront, but the very word impede lends to the idea of rebellion. And as the Bible tells us, rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Obviously, this is something we not only want to be aware of as Christians, but we want to protect ourselves from. I mean, you can turn on any of the evening's nightly news stations, TV talk shows, and even radio talk shows. And what you hear is people who are unwilling to surrender, and yet they want to fight for their rights, whether it's women's rights, whether it's the Islam religion, whether it's a group of employees who are trying to get higher wages, or whether it's a group of Christians standing out in front of an abortion clinic. To me, and more specifically, what I can see in Scripture, these are acts of rebellion. Now, there are many other forms, of course, like fighting wars and such, but oftentimes we participate in things as Christians thinking that our intentions are good, but we all know where good intentions lead. And so let's look at just a couple of Bible passages, and then we'll close this morning. 1 Peter chapter 2, and let's pick up at verse 11. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts, which war against the soul. Now, most of the time, we would equate these to alcohol and drugs and sex and other things like that. But keep in context what he is saying here. Having your conversation or your lifestyle, your manner of living, honest among the Gentiles, the pagan of the world. You as Christians, let your light shine. That whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may, by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. And so how are we to let our light shine before them? The next verse, submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man. Now, if we're to submit ourselves to every ordinance of man, certainly as God's people, he is the highest form of authority that we should submit ourselves to. But even as we submit to him, he says to submit ourselves to man for his sake, whether it be to the king of supreme or unto governors. In other words, the highest rule of the land or even the local authorities. And this would not only be the mayor, the police, and what we would think of in local authorities, but this would be our boss. This obviously would include the law, but it might even be something as small as a property owner 
who puts a sign out in his yard and says, don't walk on grass. And what is the very thing we want to do? Walk on the grass. But that's rebellion, friends. And that's the same as worshiping Satan himself, the same as witchcraft. It goes on in verse 14. It says, unto governors, as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of them that do well. For so is the will of God that with well-doing you may put to silence the ignorant of foolish men, as free and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, but as the servants of God. Therefore, honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. Well, look at what Titus has to say about it in chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. Put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, to be ready to every good work, to speak evil of no man. This includes any Democrat that you know, if you're a Republican, and this includes any Republican that you know, if you're a Democrat, especially our president. Speak evil of no man, to be no brawlers, but be gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. It's hard to show meekness when you're carrying a sign and you should be at work and you're marching out in the parking lot. When you should be submissive to your husband and you're standing with another group of women fighting for your rights to be equal when God says you're not equal. Fighting and jockeying for position in your local fellowship against others when God says you are to take the back seat. You are to promote others before yourself. Standing and fighting for your rights of equality in any way whatsoever is an act of rebellion because Jesus himself didn't even open his mouth and defend himself. Jesus never placed himself as the center of attention. He always promoted others. Well, look at what Paul says in Romans chapter 13, verses 1 and 2. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. For there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. They have been placed in their positions by God, whether good or bad, whether righteous or evil. God has appointed each one for that position, and our duty is to be submissive to them. So when the Antichrist appears on the scene, martial law takes place, and they're crashing into our homes and hauling us off to jail, we're not supposed to stand and fight against them. We're supposed to be submissive, meek, and gentle in the way we behave ourselves, and that's how our light shines. The rest of the world would stand up and fight, but we as Christians are to be different. He goes on and finishes in verse 2, Whosoever therefore resist the power, resist the ordinance of God. If you resist, if you speak evil against, if you even speak negatively against any person in a place of authority, you are speaking against God himself because he is the one that put them there. And then look at the warning it finishes with. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. Friends, this is a very important topic. One that in eight minutes we're just not able to cover appropriately. But I hope you get the idea. Our duty as Christians is to fight our battle on our knees before the Lord. Anything other than that is an act of rebellion and witchcraft. And that's not my opinion, friends. Thus saith the Lord Most High. Well, I love you, friends. I pray that your journey will be blessed and full of joy today as you walk before your King and Lord, Jesus of Nazareth. Now, as he wills and until tomorrow, I'll see you on the next video.